welcome to the third edition of the Let's Talk Rugby podcast. I'm your host today, Lewis. With me is a Warriors player, Warriors uh, back, Ntiti backline. You played in center, you played at player half, everything in the backline you played. This coming season, I might even play in the park. So. Ruben, he wants to play as a lucid uh, prop. Mm. And uh, former Uganda Queens captain, also a winner of the National League with Betwa Cops, Brian Odong. Thank you for being with here today. So thank you for being here with us today. I'm sorry, I'm fumbling, I'm fighting because tomorrow we have to beat Zimbabwe. Uh, during their captain's run, then during the game they will be weaker. So Uganda has to win. That's a general point. Um, we are talking about Zimbabwe today. Who's Uganda playing Zimbabwe? And also talking about the battle for first place. Who goes to Japan automatically? Who goes to the replay tournament in November? Uh, gentlemen. Game, game day seven this weekend. Uganda is playing Zimbabwe. Tunisia is hosting Morocco. And uh, Kenya has traveled to Namibia for that decider at the, the top. First and foremost, how are our chances against Zimbabwe? Brian? I'm um, basing on the form book and, and uh, basically the past encounters between the two sides. I think Uganda stands an upper hand. We beat Zimbabwe in 2016 their backyard and we beat them last year at uh, Legends. Mm -hmm. So, basing on the form book, I think Uganda stands a bigger chance. I'm sure the Zimbabweans come into this game a bit worry of us. I don't know, do you share his line of thought? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think Zimbabwe hates visiting Uganda in that perspective because whenever they come, even in the sevens, you saw how they lost to us agonizingly. But uh, to, uh, Saturday's visit might be a bit trickier because they, it's a do or die for them. If they lose, they are going back down. So I'm sure it's going to be a bigger fight than it has normally been. Exactly. And Ben, this is this, this what I want to ask you. Um, Zimbabwe can't uh, depend on, uh, on, on, the, on the result in Tunisia, between Tunisia and Morocco. They have to win. And uh, they have quite the pack. Their pack is quite heavy, and you saw how Morocco disturbed our pack. Do you think we shall be able to last the 80 minutes with our pack? Um, I'll, 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 I'll give our pack one up in this one. I'm sure they'll, 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 they'll own this game. Um, if you watched Morocco, Zimbabwe, I think the, the Moroccans tormented Zimbabwe more than they got close to tormenting us. I think, actually, with the from the, the part I watched, I think we did, we did better than Morocco. Could have just been one or two penalties due to small technicalities, but on the, on the, on the part of strength and, and, uh, and, and the shoving, I think we, we, we outdid Morocco. So I recently read that somewhere in, in one of the um, other sports uh, pages, uh, them saying, rate, uh, rating our pack that they did, uh, we did badly against uh, Morocco, and, I, and I, I was surprised. I thought Moroccans in the second half picked all their eight, did all eight man pick in the back foot while back peddling. Actually, the times I was watching, I was seeing the Moroccan basically digging and picking the ball from under the hooker's feet. So I think our pack is good, and I know, you know, at times scrum down is not about size, it's about uh, unity. Unison in the, time, in the time of pushing. How much you train, then you get that one rhythm. When you get that rhythm, however small you are, will actually shove someone heavier. It's like pushing a car. If you go and push a car and some one guy is, uh, is, has taken the right leg forward, the other guy's right leg is at the back, the other person's hands are pushing, Everything. that car won't move. You'll get two people who are moving with a certain rhythm and that car will move. So basically it's the same principle. Um, the Zimbabwean captain was quoted to say that they have worked very hard. They have watched our games, they've worked very hard. They, they know Ugandans are runners. They don't want, uh, they don't, they want to give the, the ball to Uganda so much. Ruben, you are, you, you, you've, you've played in the back line so much. Um, do, do, you see, do you see Uganda predominantly plays with the back line, with our runners? Definitely, because um, Uganda's style of play has always been uh, our forwards give us the platform to allow the backs to actually do more. Um, reading somewhere as well, uh, we were actually rated as the most exciting backline in this year's campaign. Yes, Namibia has done a lot. They have been a very good organized structure, but they don't have the kind of exciting brand that we have in our backline. 
So we just need to find that Uganda has to understand that this is our strength. And like the way you said, um, Zimbabwe's captain, Denford, was actually saying they actually paid too much attention on what Uganda has been doing. I'm sure that includes Morocco. And they're going to come with the same structure. They're going to want to keep it short, keep it in the small physical gaps. So that's what we have to, to avoid, not play their kind of game and make it all about us, give it to our runners. But of course the forwards also have to do their job because they do a very big job uh, that, is, that sometimes goes under the radar. But yeah, you can say that the back line is very good, but do not undermine our park as well. So uh, I would love to think if, if Zimbabwe has paid too much attention to our back line, our forwards are the asset. Definitely, our forwards have always been an asset. Um, to 95% of people who watch the rugby game, there are certain things they will not be watching. While the scrum is going on, while the line-out is taking place, while racks are being hit, they are probably opening bottles of beer. Very then true. they will turn on and watch when yeah. Philip has the ball step in. So they, do not, they, will not, they will not know what has happened to get to the that point. Philip. Yes. So when Philip is stepping and everything, people are watching. When he's converting, people now start watching because they know his conversion rate is about 98%. But there's a lot of that. Most of the rugby game actually is played in a rack, a scrum down. If you calculate the time spent in a rack, um, forwards walking to the line out, forwards winning the line out, defending a mall, hitting a rack, it's a lot of time, probably about 60 to 70 percent of the game. But that 30 percent is what people will watch. So our pack has stood out this season. I mean, I'll give them, I'll give them a one. So maybe to just add to that. Uh, in total agreement with, with the Dong, um, it, you have to be at a certain technical level to really understand what the forwards do. Like how I wrote in my article this week, you find that our forwards, they, they do so much, like let me say, take for instance Brian Asava, the work he does, uh, he's an unsung hero for Uganda. Like, totally, totally. He looks for the work, he, he, he slows down the play at the breakdown, but the fans, most of the fans are not going yeah, to look at like that. They're going to look at uh, when Philip gets the ball and uses his dancing feet. That's what they want to see. But if you're really technical, you'd assess that and see how, how much work the forwards put in. If, if I don't pick anything from what the two gentlemen are saying, uh, people, when, when you get to a big club, let's leave the beer as part of the game. Let's watch the forwards very well. Probably, we, 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 tomorrow we may miss a side for Masman Mugerwa, but uh, that's a topic for another day. That, uh, let's go to Namibia. Namibia is hosting Kenya in what is a do or die. Whoever wins goes to Japan automatically. The loser has a second, a second chance of fighting, but no one wants extra games. Uh, Brian, the last time Kenya beat uh, Namibia was in 2014, qualifying for England World Cup, which they failed to qualify because uh, Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe beat them in the last game. And uh, Namibia did an amazing job against Madagascar. They went through. Since then, Namibia is super unbeaten against African teams. Is, is Kenya going to do it, or are they wasting our time? Um, I will not use the word wasting our time. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, coming from the person who has played at international level and being the captain of Uganda, it's hard to predict for other countries because uh, the spotlight can be on you and some people may, 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 may start thinking you become a pundit or something. But basing on form, I'm, I think Namibia, Namibia will take it. I think Namibia is quite fast for the Kenyans. Um, if you watch Namibia, Uganda, I thought Uganda is quite fast, but I think the Namibians, this, there are two things. There's speed of the players, then the speed of the game, the game, which Namibians have. I think if you go by pace, Uganda is quite fast. Uganda is quite fast. For us to have the slowest person in the back line being Michael Okorat, who is not slow? He is if he goes to another one. country, he will be the fastest. True. But I think the speed at which that ball moves when, in, when Namibia is playing, can't be defended. And seeing us tear Kenya apart at, at Ngong Road with speed, I think Namibians could have, uh, uh, surely have watched that game and known that, okay, the weakness with Kenya is speed. Yes, up the speed and we love try after try. But it will be an interesting game. Of course, the Kenyans know they have to throw everything into this one. Um, no, but if, if it were Uganda playing Namibia in this last game, everybody would have thrown in everything that you can, you can throw in. Probably would have slept also in in, in uh, I will not say a shrine because <laughs> once again I would have slept in church hoping for a miracle to recover and play such a game because you know that's a game of your life. Win it and you don't even have to look back at the score. 
course, yes, Kenya needs to win by more than seven. They have to deny, sorry, they have to deny Namibia a point, point. something like that, yeah. and make sure they get a bonus point. No. Actually, because the difference is about three points. Three points. So if, if Kenya three gets points. four and Namibia gets one, mm. I don't know if they use head to head. No, there's uh, there's some much actually at play because if, 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 if Kenya wins, uh, if, if Kenya wins by f so if, if Kenya wins without a bonus point and Namibia gets a losing bonus point, there's some mathematics about I think Namibia losing uh, losing a game at home, making them stay as in, making them be runners up and Kenya. Having that, sure? uh, yes. I don't know. I, 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 I read some, 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 some funny dynamics. I read some publications on drone points and what, which mm. surely I, I, I do not know the dynamics, I do not know the inner details to but that. I, I think, under normal circumstances, it's supposed to be points because, yeah, if you are uh, looking at the statistics, you'd find that uh, points accumulated. Uh, Namibia has 296, yes, yeah. Where Kenya has 96, yeah, so, so it would be ridiculous Kenya for them to, to actually pick Kenya. 101. Yeah. Kenya has to beat them by 101. Yeah. Ouch. And that's not happening. Um, Oliver Mangeni has been a, a star, has been a menace in that rack. He's going up against, uh, going up against um, I'm forgetting the name of the gentleman. He was quite menacing as well against Zimbabwe. I think he scored a try and also made one. What, is, uh, what role do you think Oliver is going to play for Kenya? Well, I think... Looking at Oliver Mangeni, he's uh, the typical Kenyan, if you can say, very arrogant in his play aggressive. and very aggressive. And like you saw, um, we put out something on, uh, on Kratos that was talking about who's the better jumper. Uh, was it Simon Olet in Uganda or uh, was it uh, Charles Uhuru? Then uh, there was a, a Kenyan uh, gentleman that commented Oliver Mangeni, just showing you that how dominant he has been uh, this, this campaign. He came here to Kampala, he literally as if he has been training with us. He, he was stealing our lineouts for fun. On top of that, he knows how to read uh, their scrum of Samson or Somu. He knows how he plays, so he's always going to the gaps. On top of his lineout work, he knows how to use his aggression to put him in gaps and not at people. When he runs in gaps for a big fellow, he's very dangerous, putting Kenya on the, on the front foot. Kenya have leaked in. Very many points uh, with respect to Namibia. Do you think that would change, or is Namibia going to be tight at the back and, and very, very little up front? Um, one thing about, uh, I think the Namibians is they have that experience. They have guys who play professionally in South Africa. They have handled such situations before. Um, the pressure will be more on Kenya. The Namibians, of course, yes, you're hosting a game. Your fans are behind you. Um, you have some pressure. On home tough, but you see, if you've done it over and over, if you've been qualifying for the World Cup, you almost expect it to be a natural. A so habit. you're going in, yes, you go into that game with less less pressure. Um, Kenyans will be under more pressure. They are away from home. Um, they know they have to uh, to to start that game quite fast and pile the points. You cannot wait. You can't visit someone on their home tough and hope to chase. It's easier. Your job is easier if you start the game and pile on the points, which Kenya needs to do. From, the, from warm up, they need to be up for this game. If they take it lightly, then I think Namibia will take it. But if Kenya, you know, um, one thing I keep telling people about Kenya is if you've watched football, Chelsea, I like in, uh, uh, Kenya to Chelsea. You go in a game, you outplay them, you do everything, but you fail to beat them. So that's one thing about Kenya, they know how to win. We played some games, I remember sometime in 2010, we went at in Gong Road and probably had 77% position, but the score was 21-5, Kenya won. They did the part of scoring, we did the part of playing. Of possessing. They are hard to beat. We had games where we outplayed Kenya sometime in 2012 in, in, in Tunisia, Africa Cup semi-finals. We outplayed Kenya totally, but we won the game by a kick that we carved in the last minutes. The Kenyans would pile pressure score a try. They score us after people. They oh. know how to score. They have some efficiency. They play with a certain efficiency and just know how to draft games. If you looked at uh, that last time they beat Namibia, Namibia actually started the game, piled on points. Shockingly, Kenya came back and won the game, and Namibians looked burnt out by like 60 minutes. And you could tell that was Kenya is taking this game. And it's not Kenya's style to, to come back in the game. They're always the like, guys that lead with a pressure, and then the opponent comes back later. So I think. Uh, 
you, you, you've heard it from the gentleman, a very experienced rugby player and a, a very experienced upcoming rugby player as well. <laughs> Robert. <laughs> Retired. <laughs> Retired. Uh, <laughs> Retired. old. You can't retire. You're 20 how long? <laughs> uh, my age is not the issue right now. <laughs> um, I don't want us to, to overlook the, the, the game in North Africa, Morocco and Tunisia. Um, if Zimbabwe by some chance survive, Morocco is going down. But Morocco have, have, have played have played very, very well. They gave Uganda a run for their money. They went to Zimbabwe and picked a draw from Zimbabwe. Tunisia uh, almost shocked Uganda in the first minutes, but Uganda recovered. Then uh, they, they beat uh, Zimbabwe uh, in Tunis. What do you rate about this game? Um, it's a North, North African derby. Sure. Um, it's going to be very aggressive. Both teams know how to bring on the aggro. Um, I think Morocco have the edge in this one. I think Morocco are a way more organized side. Um, they are faster and I think they are fitter. So I think they will take this one. Those, it might be by a narrow win, uh, but I think Morocco will, will, will edge out too easy. Ben? Uh, everyone is looking at the top, but the, the Kavuyo at the, at the bottom, allow me to use Uganda. The Kavuyo is, is immense, because that's why I'm telling you, Zimbabwe coming to Kampala, it's not going to be as easy as it normally is. Because the other side, Dabis, anything can happen, but... Uh, judging from halves in Tunisia and halves in Morocco, I would also give it to Morocco. Uh, they seem more organized, and at least they, they can last the longer, the longer fold, let me say. Because Tunisia started well, but they burnt out so quickly. And at least uh, Morocco showed the comeback. So I'm going to give them the, the upper hand, based on the fact that they have their men to prove better than Tunisia. Okay, before we end this, Gold Cup winner? Gold Cup winner? Uh, Uganda, Zimbabwe? Uganda, 36-20. Man of the match? Fire so again, again. <laughs> Uganda, Zimbabwe? Uganda, Zimbabwe, I will not give a score, but I'll give the margin. Uganda by... Uganda by 14. And your man of the match? Man of the match, uh, two options, if I may. Um, Michael Korach, Asuman Mugero. Uh, gentlemen uh, and ladies watching us, Brian is very, very loyal. He has uh, mentioned out uh, his closest pals while he was still in, in the front team. Front row. Michael <laughs> and of course a front row buddy in Asuman. And uh, if that doesn't, doesn't, doesn't come to pass, we shall get you Brian's address and we'll find him and argue with him on why he chose those players. But from us here, that's all for this week and uh, we'll see you next week after Uganda has beaten Zimbabwe because I'm sure you're going to be Zimbabwe. Thank you.